Hello, officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, no. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. The young woman shakes her head slowly. No, you're a police officer, sir. I am, yes. Unless you've been feeding us a set of very well-rehearsed lies all this time. You've been here for three days, on official police business, no less. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. A fondness for contradictory statements. Extraordinary. Could it be because of the drinking? Of course. Be careful, officer. They don't like the police around here. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Goodbye. You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. Who knows what you are? A monster, a murderer, the gnome of Jeroma? You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that, a carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you could not do that. No one is making you. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses.
You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. Whether they like it or not. Ram it up their ears, says your adrenaline gland. Violently express yourself. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. There is only one way to wake this bone idol from his slumber. Roar like a hurricane. Rip the buildings from the earth. By the yelling man. Wait, what? No, he was just sleeping. What do you want, officer? Officer, even after a rude awakening, this dock worker respects the police more than they usually do, at least. That's the name of my employer. I work in logistics. He doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this. How's it going? <sighs> Haven't you noticed what's going on outside? Good. We're in the middle of a strike down at the arbor. Trying to force some sense into the executive board of Wild Pines. For one, I could use some more shut eye in the mornings. Right to work, right to sleep, I say. They got it. Mazarin's got it. He's guarding the gate. I'm just getting some sleep. Or was. The way he says Measurehead implies ultimate trust in this Head Reckoner's physical prowess. He seems like a worthy rival. You should slay him. Thank God, no. The worker stares at you, his eyes dry from sleep. A web of wrinkles covers his tanned forehead. I don't know what you're talking about, kind sir. But when I'm out, then I'm really out. No malt grains or whatever, no poetry stuff. 
just quality time. A little me time in the abyssal pelagic zone. You can never return to it now. Only detective work remains. Wakefulness and detection. We are the workers, the union. We know what we need. What's right for us. Okay. I guess there's also Everard. He's in charge of the Union. He's smart. Knows how to negotiate. He's got our back. Indeed. Help yourself to some... Wait. No. Oh, it's empty. Sorry about that, pal. The dock worker doesn't answer. His head is already back down on the table, in sweet sleep. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? He is your half-brother. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? No, I don't think so. We should ask him for a rundown of the area, not that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest, and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Right. And the interviews? Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Mm-hmm. Sure, but did you take it down from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. 
I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Internal affairs. And I'm not them. I'm from criminal investigation. Yes. They are not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. A painkiller would be good about now. This thing is pulsating with discomfort. The best cure for a headache is, of course, morphine. They won't have that, so cigarettes will have to do. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. But dear, you're not for me. I'm too old and too married besides. In another time and place, she might have flirted back. But that ship sailed long ago. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. She won't judge you, no matter what you say. Oh my. You know where we are, right? That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? We're in the city of Repshol, dear. How would I even begin to tell you? Repshol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government?
Oh, sweetie, it's really not. There used to be people who thought that way, other people who wanted those things, but they all went extinct. Revishol is a zone of control led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly no dictatorship of the proletariat. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Revishol, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. It has something to do with everything. I really don't know how to explain it better. I'm just a poor woman, she thinks. What do I know of these things? And how can I help you? You were doing quite well up until the end, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. She means this sincerely. Worrying won't do you any good. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Whatever do you mean? Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. I can assure you with absolute certainty, there are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. Now, gentlemen, no need to squabble. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyway, sweetie. Thank you, but... Martinez isn't the most wheelchair-accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. Perhaps another time. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. <laughs>